you probably already know that the main function of the heart is to pump blood through our circulatory system. So the blood comes in, it gets pumped, it comes in deoxygenated, that's why it's colored blue here. Then it gets pumped out to the lungs, they get it gets oxygenated in the lungs, then it comes back into the heart to get pumped out to the rest of the body. So to make sure that the oxygen is distributed. Now, whenever someone talks about heart disease and eventually heart attacks, a lot of times people talk about clogged arteries. And when I first heard that when I was a kid, I assumed that, hey, the heart is this pump and it has these arteries that are supplying blood to the rest of the body. That's what that must be what people are talking about when they talk about clogged arteries. Maybe some type of clogging forms in these really big arteries over here. And at some point, they get so big that the blood can't flow through them, and then the person the person dies. And that's what I used to think what a heart attack was when, it, when I was a kid. But this is not the case. This is not the case. When people talk about coronary artery disease, or when they talk about clogged arteries, they're not talking about the, the, these big arteries or the big veins that are going to or away from the heart. They're actually talking about the smaller arteries that are actually supplying blood to the heart. So when people talk about coronary artery disease, or when they're talking about clogged arteries, not these big pipes. They're talking about the supply of blood to, to the heart. So the first thing when people talk about uh, uh, kind of clogged arteries, the official thing they're referring to is atherosclerosis. Fancy word, but all it really means is, let me show you, atherosclerosis. And I'm not going to go into the details of how of how these arterial walls actually thicken. I could probably do a couple of videos on that. But the general idea, if this is if this is an artery over here, over time you have these plaques develop. You have these plaques develop inside of the arterial inside of the arterial wall. And they thin, they they restrict the amount of blood that can flow through the artery. And these plaques, these are kind of combinations these plaques right here are combinations of lipids. So lipids are things like cholesterols and fats. And you also have a bunch of white blood cells in here. So you also have white blood cells. Many of them might be dead. White blood cells. So over time, these plaques can kind of build up in the artery, start to restrict the flow of blood through the artery. And if these get these get thick enough and they restrict the flow of blood. This is what we call coronary artery disease. Let me write that down. Coronary, coronary artery, artery disease. And the main symptom that someone would experience if they have coronary artery disease. So I want to I want to make it very clear what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about these big pipes. I'm not talking about these big pipes that go into or away from the heart. I'm talking about the arteries that supply blood to the actual muscles of the heart. Remember, the heart is made up of muscles. It needs blood itself to do the pumping. It needs oxygen itself. So what you can imagine happens in one of these arteries that supply blood to the heart right over here. And just so you know some of these names, you might hear them thrown around. This this on the left-hand side on the red, let me label it over here. This in red over here, this is the left coronary artery, sometimes called the LCA. And you might say, wait, this is the one on the right. But we're thinking about it from the point of view of the person whose heart it is. So that's why it's their left coronary artery. This right here is the right coronary artery. And these are the ones, or some branches off of them, that might get that might that, that that might have thickening of the walls. So what you imagine this plaque could form, maybe it's forming right over here. Let me do that in a different color. Maybe it's forming right over here. And so when you have this plaque form right over here, what it's going to do is it's going to reduce it's going to reduce blood flow to all of these parts. Let me draw that a little bit neater. It'll reduce blood flow to all of this kind of downstream part of the artery. And because it's reducing blood flow, all of the muscle around here, all of the muscle that gets its oxygen, that's fed oxygen from kind of the downstream part of the artery, they won't get enough oxygen and they won't be able to pump properly. And so the bit, the main symptom of coronary artery disease is called angina pectoris. You might have, so angina. Angina pectoris. And it's usually just called angina for short. But angina pectoris literally means a strangling-like feeling 
in the chest. And you get that strangling-like feeling in the chest because your heart is not getting enough oxygen to pump properly. But at this point, you still don't have a heart attack. A heart attack happens where one of these plaques are unstable enough. So they might have a little membrane covering the top of it. But they're unstable enough so that they eventually, because of the, because of the blood flow and the pressure from the blood, they eventually break off. So they eventually break off and go into the blood. So then you have all of the material enters in the blood. And then the blood actually clots around it. And so the blood actually clots around it. So here, the blood is clotting around all of these materials. So you had a plaque. Now it, it, it was unstable. And so at some point, it just randomly breaks off. All of, all of this um, uh, blood clots around this. And then it's going downstream. It's going downstream where the arteries get thinner and thinner and thinner. So you can imagine if this thing right here was unstable, it could get dislodged over there. Let me do this in a color we can see. It gets dislodged over there. You still can't see that color. It gets dislodged over there, and if it goes downstream, the arteries get narrower and narrower, and at some point it could get it could it could it'll get stuck in a thinner part of the artery. So it'll get downstream until it gets stuck, and at that point it's completely blocking that artery. And this completely blocking of the artery from a kind of a blood clot that came off of one of these unstable plaques, this is called thrombosis. So this right here is thrombosis thrombosis. So it's the blocking of an artery due to a plaque. But once you block that artery, then not, none of the none of the none of the the muscles that that artery was feeding can now get oxygen. So everything downstream from that will no longer be able to get oxygen. And so what you'll see is that this muscle over here that needs that oxygen, it will start to die. It will start to it will start to infarct, and I know this is a very strange word. Infarct is literally it dead is literally dead tissue. So what you have over here is some of this muscle tissue in the heart that's not getting proper blood anymore. It experiences infarction, or the or the proper term for it is myocardial infarction. Myocardial myocardial infarction. And this is a very fancy word, but really, it's just saying myocardial is actually the muscle tissue of the heart. Infarction means it's dying. So part of the heart, the muscle tissue of the heart, is dying over here. And so when you have, my when you have myocardial infarction, all of a sudden, because this happens, this isn't something that happens slowly. Remember, this, the plaque might form slowly over, over years, over decades. But eventually it becomes unstable, and then one day it just breaks apart. And this whole time, you might have been experiencing something called stable angina. Stable angina means, hey, you got this thing over here. You're usually OK, but if you start jogging, maybe you start getting a little bit of chest pain. That's stable angina, but it's kind of predictable. If you start exerting yourself, you get chest pain. Now all of a sudden, you're going to experience something called unstable angina. That just because this just happened, you're going to experience this kind of probably stronger pain is going to be all of a sudden. And that's probably because you have muscle tissue that just now started to die. So all of a sudden, your, your, your heart's ability to pump got a lot worse than it was before. And this, this myocardial infarction, this, this, this dying of muscle tissue, this is a heart attack. This is what people talk about when they say, when they say someone is having a heart attack. Now, I want to differentiate between the word heart attack and another word that's sometimes used synonymously with it, and that's cardiac arrest. Cardiac, cardiac arrest. And they're used synonymously because sometimes they happen at the same time. If enough, if the heart attack is big enough, if enough of the heart dies, it might stop the heart from being able to pump altogether. It might actually make the heart stop. And that stopping of the heart is cardiac arrest. But they're two different things. The heart attack or the myocardial infarction is a dying of some of the muscles. So someone can have a heart attack and get through and actually survive a heart attack. It's just that their heart will be impaired after that. Their heart won't be as strong as it was before. Every heart attack, every myocardial infarction does not lead to cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest means the heart is has stopped that the person unless they can be um, revived in some way if, if the if the if the heart stays arrested that person that person will will pass away a heart attack they're not necessarily going to pass away now another term that tends to be confused with heart attack and cardiac arrest is the is the word heart failure which sounds just as bad as cardiac arrest heart failure because it 
cardiac arrest is the heart actually stopping. But heart failure is actually not quite as bad. It's not something you'd want to experience. But heart failure is actually just the notion that the heart is not able to pump enough blood for the body's needs. So the heart, heart failure out of, out of these three things is probably the most benign. It's still something you don't want to have. And it's probably an, in, in, it's probably an indication that, you're, that some of these other things might be coming soon. But cardiac arrest is a stopping of the heart. Myocardial infarction, or a heart attack, is some part of the heart dying because it's not able to get oxygen because some artery has been blocked because of an unstable plaque. And heart failure is just the general term that you're living. The heart hasn't stopped, but it's not able to fully uh, give all of the oxygen that the body needs. So it'll really affect someone's lifestyle. So hopefully that clarifies a lot of things about the heart and what a heart attack and, and what heart disease is.